So on this lecture, I'm going to talk about two subjects. One is the steam engine, the other one is the refrigerator. So the steam engine is like it used in uh, like uh, the steam machine, right? The steam engine. So what it consists of is you first pump the water into the higher pressure, then go into the boiler, and boiler that's where you burn, absorb a lot of heat, and then create a steam. And the steam then will drive the turbine, that's where the power output is. Then after you drive the turbine, then you know you lose the energy and then it comes down and then you have a condenser to condense those steam into the water and then you cycle it, right? So of course during the condensation, this is when you expel the heat and then during the boiling, that's where you absorb the heat. So as a result, then you will know that it's operated. You have the, how do we then, if, if we want to do the, the, the steam engine, how do we get the efficiency? So you know the efficiency is the work done divided by the heat absorbed, right? So as a result, now let me put it right here. So the, the efficiency is going to equal the work done divided by Q absorbed. And the work done is just the, the heat that it absorbs minus the heat that it expels. So therefore, efficiency is going to equal to QH minus QC divided by QH equal to 1 minus QC over QH. Okay, so this is going to be true if you don't include other kind of losses and uh, the efficiency always can be expressed in this way it doesn't matter whether it's operated if the Connell is the Connell engine operated at the, the maximum efficiency or not it is in the Connell engine where you're going to replace this is the temperature at the cold and temperature at high so that's the the one that make a difference okay so this is the general expression for the efficiency so today we're going to we're going to tell you and use an example to calculate uh, to tell you how you can calculate the efficiency for a steam engine. So the cycle is usually called the Rankine cycle, and it can be expressed with this PV diagram. So this PV diagram is very different from the like a Connell engine or the internal combustion engine or the diesel engine because in those engines we all deal with the gas phase but in here we are dealing with you know that this phase diagram contain both you, you are in the, this is called two phase regime you have the water phase you have the steam phase and you have things in between so this PV diagram one thing that I want you to pay attention is you need to know about this is the water line which is a liquid and this is a steam line so how do you read this? Say, for example, at this pressure, okay, at this point, this point lies directly on this liquid line. So it is the liquid phase. And how about this point? This point lies somewhere between this water line and the steam line. So what does this mean? That means at this point, it has two-phase regime. It has a mixture of some steam and water and because this point is a lot closer to the steam line that means has more steam and less water but as it go down from this line all the way to here that means it will completely condense into the water so therefore this line represent like from here you have you condense it into the water and then you expel the heat comes out right so now the water pump, okay, you just pump it in high pressure. So this is like your beginning main point. You take the water, you pump it into higher pressure. Then at this point, you have the same volume because water is kind of less compressible. So when you pump it out, you only increase the pressure. You don't really change its volume. At this point, then you send into the boiler. So what a boiler will do 
is, but this is the boiler we, we're going to operate at constant pressure. So as this boiler operates at constant pressure, it goes from this completed water, go passing the water line, then go into the water and the steam, and then go into this part, complete the steam, so that here, this is, would be the superheated steam. Okay, so it's pretty hot right there. So uh, after that, that's, that steam then drive the turbine. Right? So this is, the, this is a, a case we're going to treat this as adiabatic. So now you, so therefore this cycle you have that. One, this is a constant volume line. Just go to high pressure. This is a constant pressure line. So every time you go through this constant pressure line, you always go across this kind of pure phase to mixed phase to another phase. Right? So this is the point, this is the highest temperature. And when it's a superheated steam, then as the superheated steam drive the turbine, deliver power, it cools down. Okay, and this is an adiabatic process. So it's an adiabatic process means it doesn't absorb the heat, right? It just delivers power, but then it loses the energy. So now the temperature drops and it goes down to this place and where you have a two-phase regime. Then it, the condenser will condense it. So this is this is how this one is been uh, represented. One thing you need to pay attention is this is adiabatic process. Okay. So is a, if it's an adiabatic process, that means it doesn't absorb the heat, and so therefore this is also isentropic process. So the entropy during this process is the same, so no, there's no change. So now I describe the cycle for you. Now, how do we then calculate the efficiency? So this come, this this uh, this kind of diagram, this PV diagram, is actually very complicated, but you could kind of guess, right? This point is probably the lowest temperature. This point is the highest temperature. And this is your beginning point, then go to high pressure water, then go drive the steam, and steam drive the turbine, and then you condense. So it's going to be difficult for you to now to try to calculate, okay, what is the, like, like what you do in the Connell engine or internal combustion engine? You want to all oh, calculate work done. So what we will do is we actually will use it. We just know that work done is going to equal the heat absorbed minus the heat that they expel. All right. So another thing, another approximation we will use that is, since a lot of times this is really operating in this called constant pressure range, we're going to use the enthalpy. So the enthalpy, which is H, is going to equal to U plus PV. Is during the constant pressure change. Uh, during the constant pressure process, when you move from one state to the other state, the amount of heat need to absorb is precise the change of the enthalpy. So now, if I now try to do this, then what would be my QC? The QC, which is the heat that it's going to expel, let me see. Okay, the QC is the heat expel. This QC is going to equal to enthalpy at this, the point 4 minus H1. Right? Now, how do I get the QH? So this is the QH, then therefore equal to H3 minus H2. Alright? So, now here I'm going to erase this part now. Hopefully you can kind of look at just this PV diagram. You will remember how the steam engine in those block diagram represent in each step. So now I have QH equal to H3 minus H2, and I have QC equal to H4 minus H1. Okay, but I'm going to make an approximation.
this approximation, I'm going to say h1 roughly equal to h2. So this is not a very bad approximation because if you really, in the whole uh, picture, in the whole scheme, the water doesn't change that much of the volume. So really, when you pump the water, you read not you, you pump to higher pressure, you did not really change the volume that much, so you really didn't do that much of the work. So therefore, this one is not a bad approximation. Not you know. Furthermore, you know, water its volume compared to the steam phase, its volume is so small. So making this approximation is not going to create a lot of error. So if I have that. Now I have this, okay, so then I would just say, oh, okay, therefore, since E, since I can write this E equal to QH minus QC divided by QH, I can write it equal to H3 minus H1 now. And then this is H4 minus H1. Okay. And this phase, and this phase, and that, you know, the your, your textbook will show you an example. How do we look up some of those enthalpy table and we'll be able to find out those answers? So that's the next that I will uh, cover. So now let me continue. So from that diagram, we already know that the the heat that absorb is roughly, you know, approximately equal to H3 minus H1. The heat that release is roughly equal to H4 minus H1. And then we know the efficiency is going to be equal to that. It's going to be equal to this. So roughly, can you can just find out equal to this. So if we want to find out the efficiency of the steam engine, so what we need to do is we're going to find out what H1 is, what H3 is, what H4 is. Okay, so your textbook gave you this example. That is a steam engine operated in this two point. So one is operated at the pressure, so point one. So this is, is at the pressure is going to equal to about 0 0.023 uh, bar. Okay. So since this point one actually lie right at the steam line, uh, right sorry, so lie right at this liquid line, so it is also the point of the boiling point. So now, if I so now if you take take the, your table number one, so table one, and this is the table one that you see here in your textbook. So at the pressure of 0 0.023, you'll find out the boiling point is 20 degrees centigrade. Okay, so it is 20 degrees centigrade. So at this point, then what? How do I then read it? So let me use, uh, let me mark it on this, on this uh, table. Then you will find out then this is the point that you're going to do, right? So from this table, then you will find out the enthalpy of the water at 0.023 bar and at 20 degrees centigrade is 84 uh, kilojoule. So now what do I get? H1 is going to 84 kilojoule. So that's pretty easy, right? So you say, well, I'm going to operate it at this point, say, operating between 0 0.023 bar and the other one that is at, I think it's at uh, the maximum point, point 0.3, it is at 300 bar and 600 centigrade.
So that will allow me to find out what H3 is. Okay? So now let's find out what is H3. So then you go and look at your table number two, at table 4.2. So you have 300 bar, you have 300 bar and 600 degree centigrade. You got this one. So you see the 300 bar, 600 degree centigrade, that give you 3444 kilojoule. So the difficult part is how do you find out point number four? Okay, so so here is the trick. So point number four is the position that you're gonna do that you know this is a debatic process. So therefore it is an isentropic process. Then you go over there, look at the point number three, which is which is this point that on your table, right? Which is this point, and find out what is entropy. Its entropy turns out is 6.233 kilojoule uh, per Kelvin. So S3. Now, next is I am going to use this information and this pressure information allow me to calculate what the point number four is. So I now I'm going to now calculate a point number four. Remember, point number four. This is in the, in the two-phase regime. So one thing you need to also know about this in the two-phase regime, actually temperature is the same but the energy is not necessarily the same. So this, you know, even though the steam maybe is still at the same temperature as that, but you still need to take the heat out in order to condense them into the water, into water, right? So now, if I now look at the point number four, so first of all, I know the entropy at this point is going to be the same as that point. And the second thing, I'm going to go back and read this uh, table, right? On this table, you also see that at the temperature you go to 20 degree centigrade, at the pressure you go to 0.023 bar, and you will find out from that, you will be able to find out what the entropy is for the water phase, and what the entropy is for the steam phase. Then, since it's a two phase regime, it's just a linear combination of these two phases. And then I can just take, okay, now if I have x fraction, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x fraction is water, then 1 minus x fraction, that will be my steam. So if I want to calculate the entropy at point number 4, then what I will do, so I'm going to now erase this part so you can see better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take S of water times X plus S of steam times 1, plus X, uh, 1 minus X. And that has to be equal to S3 because this is the isentropic process. Now I do know that the S uh, water in this case S water is 0.297 kilojoule per Kelvin. What is S steam? S steam, this one is 8.667 kilojoule per Kelvin. So now I want to find out what X value make it equal to this one equal to 6.233 kilojoule per Kelvin, right? So I can then calculate what this is. So then go through the simple math and then I get 0.297 times x plus 
8.667 times 1 minus x equal to 6.233. What do I get? I'm going to get the x. Turns out equal to 0.29. So 1 minus x is going to equal to 0.71. Okay. So this is now is the thing for you to calculate. What is the fraction at 0.4? What fraction is steam and what fraction is water? So you got this. 29% is water, 71% is steam. Then what are you going to do? Then how you do calculate what is H4? H4 is all equal to 0.29 times the H of water at that temperature, at that pressure, plus 0 0.71 times the H of steam, right? And that is given here, right here. You can go back and take a look again, okay? So, <clears throat> the steam, this one, is 2538 kilojoule. And this one, we already know, we just did that, that one is 84 kilojoule. So, after I do this calculation, plug in, my, uh, plug in those numbers in, what do I get? I am going to get the H4 therefore equal to 1A24 kilojoule. So I mentioned earlier, if you want to calculate what the efficiency is, you got E equal to 1 minus right? So I already calculate what H3 is, but H, H1, H1 and H3, I just look at from the table. H1 equal to, so we just have that. H1 equal to 84 kilojoule. And H3 equal to, I think is equal to 3444. Four, four. And then I can then plug those numbers in. Then I get this one is roughly equal to 48 percent. So you will see that the steam engine turns out to have a pretty high uh, efficiency, right? So you operate it between here and here, you're going to get about 48 percent efficiency. Now let's check. Okay, so th th let's take a look at this uh, steam engine. Let's compare that to Carnot cycle. Okay. So if it's a Carnot, Carnot engine efficiency, we say E, Carnot engine efficiency is E equal to 1 minus TC over TH, right? And what is TH? We just say 600 degrees centigrade. What is TC is? It's 20 degree centigrade. So this is roughly about 300. And so this is roughly about 900. So we'll give you an efficiency about 66%. So you can see that the steam engine and Connell engine, the efficiency difference is not that big. So it's compared to the internal combustion engine, you can just find out the steam engine is pretty good. So this example, you know, tell you how are you going to use those table, the enthalpy table, and to calculate what is the uh, efficiency for a steam engine. And the next one I'm going to do is to do the uh, refrigerator. It's also involved with how you pull out all of those table and then you will be able to calculate what is the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator.